Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Code Socket. In today's video, we are going to start with a new topic which is file handling in C programming. Okay, so guys, we have also delivered playlists in file handling in Java and Python. So today we are going to start with one new one, which is file handling in C programming. Okay, so before starting this video, I would like to request all of you to please show your love and like and share our videos with your friends and family. And also at the same time, please don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for your support, guys. And please, if you really like the content, please don't forget to subscribe. That really motivates us a lot. Okay, so without any more ado, let's get started. And this will be the part one of the video, okay, which I will be showing how to read data from a text file using C language. Fine. So let's directly go to our IDE. So as you can see here, we are inside our IDE and I'm using C Lion IDE. Fine. You can go ahead with any IDE, that doesn't matter. The code and the syntax will be absolutely same. Okay. So here, guys, you can see I have a directory called file handling. Inside that, I have a C file called readfile.c and I have this f1.txt. This is a text file. Okay, guys, the extension is very, very important. You have to keep that in mind. Okay. So if you see here, I have some data inside this file. You can see at Codus Arcade, we believe that learning to code, etc., etc. We have some simple paragraph written here and I will be showing you how to read data from this particular file. Okay. So here I have the read file dot C file created where I'll be writing the code. Okay. So before starting, you should know how to open a file and close a file. Okay. For that, let's start. So file handling in C is actually a crucial aspect of programming, allowing you to read from a file and also write data to files. Okay. So we need to know three modes. Okay. So read, write, and sometimes we need to add some data. Okay, that is called append. These are the three modes actually. Okay, fine. So we'll be talking about the read mode right now. Fine. And guys, for opening files, we need a function called fopen. We'll be using this function. Okay, fopen. And those of you who don't know the f of n file function. It returns a file pointer that points to the beginning of the file. Okay, so let's get started with it. So I'll just write something here used to open a file. This function is used to open a file and just because there's a function, let me write a bracket here. Fine. So let's get started. So first thing first, because it is returning a pointer. So I'll use the file pointer here. You can see here guys file capital F file file. I'll create the pointer. FPTR. You can write any name. I prefer this. So after that, after reading the data, I need to store it somewhere, right? So for that, I will just use a character array called buffer. Okay, and let me fix the size to say 100 bytes. Okay, so 100 characters it will print. Now, with the help of the pointer, I will use a fopen function. And here I will have to give the parameters or the arguments. It takes two arguments, which is first of all the file name and then it takes the mode. Fine. You can see here, right? The file name and the mode. So let us go here and give the absolute path of the file name. Okay. So I have the f1.txt. I will just right click and you can see here I have the copy path reference option. I'll click on this and go to absolute path. Fine. Then I will just bring my cursor inside the double quotes and paste it here. You can see guys, I have the file name copied here. Fine. And as I said, we have three modes, read, write and append. For read, we are trying to read some data, right? So I'll just write R as the mode, small r. Fine. Got it. Now, very important thing. We always have to check if the file opening is successful or not. Okay. If the file is not successfully opened, then what happens? The fopen function returns null. Okay, so we have to always check for null. So how do you do it? It's very simple. I'll just write if fptr equal equal null, then we will return an error message. Okay, guys, error handling is also very important. So we have to deal with that properly. Okay, so printf, I will just say error opening the file okay 
and I'll just give an exclamation mark and say slash n to go to the next line. Fine. And then because it is an error, I will just return one. Make sense? Normally, if we don't have errors, then we return zero, right? So in this case, we have some error. So we are returning one to the console or the terminal. Fine. Now let's start with reading the data from the file. Okay, so I'll just write a comment, read and print each line. Okay, in order to read data, we have a function called f gets. Okay, guys, we can read data using three different functions. We can use f scanf, we can use f gets, or we can use f read any one of these fine i will be using the fget function okay let's see how to do it so i'll just use the while loop the while loop is needed because if there is no data in the file it's unnecessary wasted of resources right we should not waste our resources so i'll just say while i'll use the fget function okay here i will take my buffer variable and then till what extent do you want the max count so in that the max count is the size of our buffer okay and then the last one is from where do you want to read okay so for that it is actually the file which is the fptr fine you can see guys first it takes the variable where we want to store the data after reading and then we have the max count how much data you are reading and then the file the location of the file which is stored in the file pointer fine and if this is not equal to null then only we'll read the data is that clear fine now just say printf because the data in the text file is considered a string guys if we have integer decimal whatever it is it is considered as string only okay inside the text file so i'll just write percentage s as the format specifier and then i will use my buffer Fine. And guys, please remember, after we have read the file, we need to close the file. So I will use F close and then I will just pass the FPTR, our file pointer. Fine. That's all. We are done with it. Now, let's just run it and see if we are able to successfully read the data or not. Fine. So I'll right click and run this. Yes, guys, you can see here it's giving us the data. At Core Circuit, we believe that learning to code should be an engaging and enjoyable experience. Okay, and so and so. We're getting this data read from this particular file, which is f1.txt. Fine. So this is it, guys. This is how you read data from a file. Okay. I'll repeat myself again. First, we take a file pointer and then we take a character array so that we can store the data from the file that we have read, and then we take the pointer. And we use the f of n function here, which takes two arguments. The first one is the file name or the path. The second one is the mode because we are reading data. So it is read mode. After that, we just have to check if the file open function has actually read the file or not. So we check if it is null. If it is null, that means we have not been able to read the file. So we print the error message and we return one. That means there is something wrong in reading the file. Okay. After that, if we have successfully read the file, then we read the data from the file. Okay. So we can use either f scanf, f gets, or f read. Fine. And then we use the while loop so that as soon as the data in the file is over, we stop. So we just say we use the f get function and we pass our character array where we want to store the data. Then we give the max count, which is the size of our character array. And then we pass the file here, the file pointer. If that is not equal to null, till then we print the data. Okay. And just remember in a text file, whatever data we have is in the form of string. Okay. And after we have successfully read the data, we have to close the file. So that's it about reading the file. Okay. Guys, I hope you have liked this video. If you have any doubts regarding this, you can post your doubts in the comment section. I'll be very happy to clarify them. Thank you for watching. This is sort of signing off. The next time I will be coming on with the next video, the next part, which is writing data into a file. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye bye and happy learning.